Uh, my name is Sarma Rani and uh, my colleague on this research is Rohit Dhariwal. Uh, this work is primarily theoretical in nature. However, it has a strong computational input because when you want to analyze uh, the insights gained from theory and also validate the theoretical predictions, computations play a very important role. So this theory is theoretical with the, uh, and today I'm going to talk about uh, some of the validations and analysis we have done using direct numerical simulations. Um, so the outline of this talk is as follows. I will briefly motivate uh, this research followed by some background in terms of the theory, very brief introduction to the theory. Uh, then I will move on to talk about the computational aspects of this study uh, and uh, finally conclude. Uh, <clears throat> So the main, uh, the main focus of this research is to understand the dynamics of inertial particles in turbulent flows. And uh, particle-laden turbulent flows are important in many natural and engineering applications. I list a few here. Uh, uh, two of the important motivating problems for this study are the first one being warm cloud precipitation. And, um, in this, in the context of warm cloud precipitation, we are interested in understanding if cloud turbulence, uh, we are interested in understanding the effects of cloud turbulence um, on the water droplet growth rates. And specifically, we are interested in knowing if cloud turbulence increases the collision rates of uh, water droplets, because increased collision rates of water droplets may lead to faster growth in the droplet size and thereby hasten rainfall formation. The other problem of interest is planetesimal formation. Planetesimals are uh, small, uh, small planet-like structures that are precursors to the final planets. And here, uh, the astrophysicists are generally interested in understanding the role of turbulence in driving the dispersion and uh, the collision-driven coalescence of dust particles. Uh, other applications uh, include volcanic eruption where we are interested in quantifying the dispersion of volcanic particles in the atmosphere and also spray dynamics in engine uh, where we want to understand the effects of turbulence on the atomization dispersion of fuel droplets uh, inside the combustion chamber. Now in all these applications that I have interested um, we are primarily interested in understanding the effects of turbulence on the relative motion of inertial particles. So let me talk briefly about what I mean by particle pair relative motion. So by re um, particle, when we say we want to understand particle pair relative motion, we mean we want to understand the temporal and spatial dynamics of the separations R and the relative velocity is u of dispersed particle pairs. And uh, the role of turbulence is rather important because generally speaking, if you have inertia-less passive scalars, turbulence is known to spatially homogenize the passive scalar distribution. However, when you have inertial particles dispersed in turbulence, turbulence introduces strong inhomogeneities uh, in particle relative motion. And, uh, the inhomogeneities are generally quantified in two manners. The first one being spatial inhomogeneities. Spatial inhomogeneities are manifested as uh, the clustering of particles in specific regions of the turbulent flow. And uh, the clustering of particles is quantified by a statistic known as the radial distribution function G of R. Uh, the other inhomogeneity we are interested in is uh, is the relative velocity in homogeneities. And here, uh, we, want to, uh, we want to know uh, the effects of turbulence on the probability distribution function of particle pair relative velocities. Uh, is the probability density function of relative velocities Gaussian, or does turbulence induce strong non-Gaussianity into the relative velocity PDF? I have the subscript, uh, the, I have here UR, the subscript R simply uh, means that we are specifically interested in the component of the relative velocity along the separation vector. So UR is U dotted with 
the separation vector r divided by the magnitude of the separation vector r. Um, so why are we specifically interested in clustering and the PDF ur? The reason is that g of r and the PDF p of ur are two key inputs to the collision frequency of particles. So here you will see that inside the integral there is this PDF p of ur conditioned upon the particle pair being uh, in contact. So you can see that the PDF p of ur is a key input to the collision frequency. Also, there is the g of sigma, which is again the radial distribution function g of r conditioned upon particle pair being particle pairs being at contact. Uh, so let me briefly talk about the, uh, the clustering or the spatial inhomogeneities of particles in turbulent flows. Firstly, uh, the inertia of particles is quantified by a dimensionless parameter known as the Stokes number, which is a ratio of particle viscous relaxation time to a flow time scale. Uh, and uh, because in turbulence you have a spectrum of turbulent scales, tau flow could be a flow scale of interest. Typically we select the Kolmogorov time scale tau eta. Therefore the Stokes number then is defined as the ratio of the viscous relaxation time to the Kolmogorov time scale. And when this uh, Stokes number is, uh, is uh, less than or of order one, uh, there is a well-known mechanism known as preferential concentration by which uh, we mean that particles are spun out of high vorticity regions and cluster in regions of high strain rate. Um, so this, this is one of the mechanisms of particle clustering. And here we have uh, DNS, direct numerical simulation evidence of particle clustering, inertial particle clustering in isotropic turbulence. Uh, this is one of the well-known studies conducted by Reed and Collins. Um, here, uh, the picture to the left shows the effects of particle inertia on the, uh, on the clustering of particles. So when Stokes number is 0 0.01, meaning the Stokes number is quite small, the particles closely follow the fluid, therefore there is no clustering. However, as you increase the Stokes number, Progressively, the clustering also increases and it peaks around a Stokes number of 0.7. And as you increase the Stokes number beyond 0.7, the clustering reduces. And when Stokes number reaches 4, you again see that the particles are, are, are uh, moving towards a more random distribution. Um, so now the second, uh, uh, the second statistic of interest is the PDF of pair relative velocities. And this is again a study uh, by Collins, uh, Sundaram and Collins. And uh, this is a DNS study where they have shown that the PDF of relative velocity is a strong function of, of course of pair separation. So when the pair separation is large, so L by two, when the pair separation is L by two, meaning half of the integral length scale of turbulence, uh, the PDF is Gaussian in nature, the, uh, the dotted line. Whereas when the pair separations are quite small, the PDF is strong, the PDF of relative velocities is strongly non-Gaussian with a high peak and a long tails. So you can see that turbulence has a significant influence on both spatial, uh, on this, both the spatial distribution of particles as well as the relative velocity distribution. So now, uh, as I said, this is primarily a, a theoretical study and uh, uh, it's a stochastic, it's a, it's a study in which we derived a stochastic theory. I'll give you a very brief outline of this. And uh, uh, the, the, the primary quantity of interest in a stochastic theory is the probability density function omega. And in this case, we are interested in the omega or in the PDF of pair separations r and relative velocity u. And this particular theory um, specifically focuses on very high Stokes number particles, very inertial particles. Uh, the motivation being the planetesimal formation where the particle inertia is quite large. So the Stokes number regime of interest is STR much, much greater than one. STR being a ratio of viscous relaxation time to a time scale tau r, where tau r is the time scale of eddies whose size is of the order of pair separation. 
because, it, uh, because you can imagine that eddies whose size scales with the pair separation r have the most role in driving the relative velocities. Therefore, and you can show that for str much, much greater than one particles, the PDF omega of r comma u is governed by a PDF transport equation that I'm showing here. The key, uh, the key quantity here is the diffusivity tensor duu, which you see in the last term here. The stochastic theory provides us, uh, using the stochastic theory, we derived uh, an expression for duu, which is the uh, uh, which is the diffusivity tensor in the pair relative velocity space, and you can show that for uh, high inertia particles, duu is of the form shown here. Um, so duu contains a time integral of uh, the two time correlation of fluid relative velocity seen by particle pairs. So let me just uh, elaborate on this quantity here. Delta u refers to the difference in the fluid velocities seen by a particle pair. So the first delta u is the difference in the fluid velocities seen by a particle pair at a reference time, which I am calling t equal to zero. The second delta u is the fluid velocity difference seen by the same particle pair after some time separation t. So we are interested in the correlation of Del, uh, in the two time Lagrangian correlation of delta u, the fluid velocity difference seen by particle pairs. Now, I, we, I've already mentioned that we are interested in um, a high Stokes number regime. Therefore, the relative, uh, the relative positions or separations and the center of mass x, they do not change very much during flow time scales. So essentially, this correlation is a Eulerian two time correlation. So we are able to convert the Lagrangian two-time correlation into an Eulerian two-time correlation for very high Stokes number particles. As I've already mentioned, we've, uh, we've derived an explicit, expre explicit analytical expression for DUU in our stochastic theory, but we were also interested in knowing if the DUU obtained from theory agreed well with the DUU predicted from DNS. So this is where the beauty of theory comes into picture because theory tells you that duu drives the relative velocities. That, that is not something you can imagine. So theory is telling you that this is what drives the relative velocities. And now DNS provides the mechanism for you to calculate it and analyze the predictions of the theory. Um, and why blue waters? If not for blue waters, we would probably not have been able to compute duu from DNS because our DNS is themselves are quite small, but it is the DUU calculation which is very computationally intensive. And uh, why is this? So to the Eulerian two-time correlation which I have shown there, and uh, this Eulerian two-time correlation was calculated or computed using DNS of forced isotropic turbulence with dispersed fixed particles. These are fixed particles. And to compute these correlations, we considered one million particles, which means five, approximately five times 10 to the power of 11 particle pairs. Um, so I don't even know what it is called, five times 10 to the power of 11 particle pairs, uh, or half pico or something. Uh, and to compute these correlations, we used anywhere from 20,000 to 40,000 processor cores. This could not have been done. And this is very computationally intensive. No, not the least because of the number of particle pairs involved. I will not go into the details of uh, how I compute uh, this uh, delta u. Um, just one point I want to make. You see the ensemble average angle brackets. That represents averaging over particle pairs as well as uh, because the two time correlation, you can average over snapshots that have a fixed amount of time separation. So it is a very, very time consuming uh, process. So, uh, so when we, uh, so finally, uh, to, so we, we are computing DUU using forced isotropic turbulence, meaning isotropic turbulence uh, to which we are artificially adding energy to keep the isotropic turbulence from decaying away. So there are two ways in which you can add forcing. Let me go quickly. Deterministic forcing and stochastic forcing. In deterministic forcing, we simply 
add at, a, at the end of every time step the energy dissipated during that time step. So at the end of the time step, you, calculated the, you calculate the amount of energy dissipated and add it back to the flow. In stochastic forcing, um, at every time step, you're adding, adding a random acceleration to the flow. So our, one of our concerns was, is the forcing itself having, a, having an effect on the way you compute DUU? Because we were wondering whether uh, deterministic forcing uh, artificially increased the temporal coherence of the large-scale eddies. The, the large-scale eddies are important because uh, these are, uh, the particles of interest are very high inertia particles, therefore the relative motion is driven primarily by the large scale. So we were interested to see if deterministic forcing had an artificially, uh, had artificially increased the temporal coherence of, um, of large-scale eddies. To come to the results, so here I am plotting, because the two-time correlation is a tensor, uh, so we are, we are, here we are plotting the transverse component of the two-time correlation, and uh, we consider two Reynolds numbers, uh, 128 cube grid and 512 cube grid, with 80 and 210 Reynolds number, and uh, we are plotting the component at four separations, and the black solid line is the, stock, is the deterministic forcing case. And you can see that it is actually increasing. You can see these uh, high value regions, which is more prominent in the next plot. And this is, the, this is the deterministic forcing. These are all the various stochastic forcing cases. You can see that our conjecture is essentially proven here. The deterministic forcing increases the temporal coherence of uh, large scale eddies, leading to this high values of the uh, DUU tensor. And finally, we are grateful to NSF for funding this research as well as providing access to blue waters. I also want to acknowledge our collaborator, Professor Don Cook. Thank you. Thank you very much. So if you have any questions, please uh, raise your hand. And uh, in the meantime, I will ask my question. So yeah. I in one of your simulations, you are introducing a million particles. There is no way they have no effect on, on what you are studying. How do you take you them? You mean do particles account? influence the turbulence? So uh, is these is are tracer particles, right? No, these are inertial particles. Inertial. Uh, it doesn't really matter whether they are inertial or not because in the specific context of computing the correlation, the particles are fixed in space. So they are not moving only in the, in the space. Uh, so they're not moving. So it doesn't really matter. Okay. So, so these are not real particles. These well, are just. These are real particles that are fixed for the sake of only computing DUU. Okay. 